I bought this bottle on eBay. Yeah, I know. I'm not cool enough to dig my own. <laughs> the seller said that this was a Kellogg's corn syrup bottle and that Kellogg's sold it with their cornflake cereal. I'd never heard of that and there were no others being sold. It was pretty cheap and it still had liquid in it, so I bought it and I waited till it arrived before I started investigating. See what I found out on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Well, I started on the Kellogg's website, finding a few sites with the Kellogg's history, but nothing was talking about ever selling corn syrup with cereal. Then I stumbled on a picture that looked like my bottle. It didn't say corn syrup on it. It said castor oil. That's strange. I don't remember Kellogg's making pharmaceuticals. Then I looked a little closer. It says Spencer Kellogg. I go and look again at who the original Kellogg's cereal people are. They are John and Will Kellogg. Well, it turns out this is a completely different Kellogg's company and it has nothing to do with cereal or food, really. Here's the story. Spencer Kellogg was born in New York in 1851. His grandfather began milling linseed oil in 1824 in New York. So, first of all, what's linseed oil? Linseed oil is also known as flaxseed oil. It's an oil obtained from the dried, ripened seeds of the flax plant. The oil is obtained by pressing, sometimes followed by solvent extraction. Linseed oil is a drying oil meaning it can polymerize into a solid form. The oil can be used on its own or blended with other oils, resins or solvents, varnish and wood finishing, as a pigment binder and oil paints, as a hardener and putty, and in the manufacturing of linoleum. And there's a food grade linseed oil also used in nutritional supplements. So Spencer Kellogg moved to Buffalo, New York, and at age 28, he built his first linseed oil mill in 1879. 15 years later, he constructed a second mill, giving him a total of 36 presses, making his the largest linseed oil plant in the US. The removal of linseed oil from flaxseed required heavy and costly equipment. The seed was ground between steel rollers and tempered by heat and moisture. The oil was filtered and placed in large storage tanks to settle or age. In the late 1930s, the processing technology improved with the use of expeller presses. Spencer Kellogg and Sons bought the property to the Edgewater plant in 1905, but the factory wasn't built until 1909. The deep water dock allowed huge ships from India and Argentina to come directly to the plant and unload cargoes of flaxseed. The Spencer Kellogg and Sons Company was incorporated in 1912. They had plants in Minneapolis, Edgewater, New Jersey, and its headquarters was in Buffalo, New York. In 1913, the plant started crushing castor beans from India. The castor oil was used in the textile industry to soften fibers and used in synthetic dyes. It seems kind of out of place, honestly, that they sold castor oil for help with constipation. They weren't really in the business of drugs, but there are all these ads in these old magazines, so they advertised it pretty well. During World War I, newspapers reported that people were horrified by the thought of taking a dose of castor oil. Because everyone hated the taste of castor oil, they tried to find ways to mask the flavor. Some articles in the early 1900s recommend mixing castor oil with orange juice to keep yourself regular. By 1905, castor oil cocktails became a trend. You could get these at your local pharmacy, which back then were more of a general store. You could buy sodas at the soda fountain and pick up some general items while the druggist whips you up a castor oil cocktail which usually included some alcohol. By 1920, newspapers around the world announced that Kellogg's had finally made a tasteless castor oil. If you ever had the regular stuff, you know that this was amazing news. My bottle is a castor oil bottle. It says Kellogg at the bottom, and the date stamp is 1938. I'm not sure how long they manufactured the castor oil for. 
This lid won't budge, otherwise I'd tell you how it smells. <laughs> this liquid has been in here for 82 years. You can see why someone would think this is corn syrup. It's got that viscousness to it. So after Spencer's death in 1922, his son Howard became president. After World War II, sales reached over $140 million. Here's a few interesting stories that I found along the way. December 20th, 1926. Normally, the company would send a boat called the Linseed King from Edgewater between four and five in the morning, here's the boat docks, down to the Buffalo location, which was just down the Hudson River. The men boarded the boat and then were transported back to the Edgewater location in time for work. This particular morning, they had just put an ad in the newspaper for more workers, so there were a lot more people waiting at the dock this day. Between 80 and 100 men boarded this boat. This particular morning, there had been ice cakes on the water, and it wasn't quite daylight yet. So at some point, after dodging blocks of ice all morning, one hit, and the boat sunk in about two minutes time. Since it was very cold that morning, they were all huddled inside the cabin with one small opening for the crowd to rush through and not enough time. So some of the passengers made it out into the river, reaching for floating cakes of ice. The survivors were floating in the water for about a half hour before rescue came. Many caught pneumonia. When they finally got the boat pulled out of the water, 35 bodies were recovered from inside the cabin. It was believed that another 20 were missing, but there wasn't a definite number of lives lost. The damage on the boat suggested that the boat had been clearly overloaded and had been riding too low in the water. I put the link down below for the whole story. It's called The Last Launch of the Linseed King. Here's another headline from the New York Times from March 18, 1943. Edgewater blasts are heard for miles. No one hurt in the second explosion at that plant in two years. Hydrogen in a two-story storage tank at the Spencer Kellogg Linseed Oil Company plant on River Road exploded at nine o'clock tonight. Two blasts in succession were heard for miles around, the first sending a sheet of blue flame seven stories high, the second a similar one four stories high. I can't read any more without a subscription, but no one was hurt, so. <laughs> High labor costs and overabundant domestic flaxseed supplies were making linseed oil less profitable. So by 1960, the Kellogg Company stopped milling at Edgewater. The company was sold to Textron Incorporated in 1961. Today, there are still remnants of the Kellogg's linseed oil plant. Today, you can still buy castor oil. I'm not sure if people are still using it for laxatives, but I do see a lot of other uses for castor oil. One, hair treatments, and there's also a castor oil cocktail to induce labor. Well, this wasn't the story that I thought it was going to be, but it was just as interesting. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.